gentlemen, boys, and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the ninth expansion pack episode of the Switch It Up cast. I am your host today, Seth Trav, joined as always by our good, good, good friend, Glenn. How you doing today, sir? I am doing super well. I just popped an antihistamine. Ooh. I'm feeling great. I am ready to discuss all things Switch, and today, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, we have got an expansion pack episode. We are going to be talking all about <laughs> the game, Levels Plus, Addictive Puzzle Game, ladies and gentlemen. That's We're right. We're talking all about it. It's worth every single one of those words in its title, sir, and more. Can't it absolutely wait. is. Can't wait to talk about that. I cannot either. But we gotta wait a little bit because I keep getting distracted by how awesome our intro song is. Oh, dude! Uh, every week never gets old. That's all I gotta say. We're gonna let it play out a little bit for you, ladies and gentlemen. And that is gonna lead us, ladies and gentlemen, right into our first segment and it's the inventory that's right ladies and gentlemen it's what we're playing right now what we're doing on the switch or just in gaming in general because we've been getting a little uh spread lately but mostly the switch it's going to pretty much be the switch yeah now because that's what we are pretty much all about here on the switch it up show so what are you playing right now my friend Glenn? uh well sir i gotta be i i gotta try not to talk about it too too much but uh like I fell into the Levels Plus Addictive Puzzle game in a big way earlier Addictive this week. Is the great word for this one. Like I mean, I I don't I, I really don't want to. I was looking for. I don't want to spoil like you know the review segment, but I gotta tell you like if you look at this in the in the um you know in the store in the eShop and you say I don't really know if that's for me. I assure you, it's for you. Like you need to you got to give this a try, and we'll talk about it more in the review, but. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm glad that this exists. That's how happy I am. <laughs> All right, right. This has just made life better. Yeah. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to keep it rolling. We got to get to that later on. Because right now, we're going to hit you with some potent power ups. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's the news segment where we let you know what's going on. All things in the world of Nintendo Switch. Today, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we got some awesome news for you. Uh, there is an adapter coming out now uh, to be able to use the PS4 controller with your Nintendo Switch. How about you tell us about that, Glenn? Uh, yeah, you can actually go. Um, it's uh, it's not out yet. It's going to come out uh, sometime next month. Uh, there's a link to it over on uh, Amazon. Uh, and uh, it's interesting because it uses the USB-C uh, uh, port uh, on the Switch. So it's something it looks like you'll only be able to play it like if you're in like handheld mode because you know that's the port that it uses when it's in the dock. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like you can use both the PS4 and the Xbox One controller. Um, there's really not too much in the description about it, um, like on in terms of like you know can I use the mic port? Because if mm. I can use the mic port, that's going to solve the crazy problem of, like, you know, how do I use my, how do I get game audio and how do I get, like, you know, headset audio from, like, the app. Um, but I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm, it's kind of, it's kind, of, kind of weird to use a PS4 controller on there. Um, and the, the adapter itself is actually, like, it's priced pretty low. It's under $30. Um, so this would be cheaper than, you know, buying, like, a, um, you know, a pro controller. Uh, mm -hmm. But... I don't know. I don't know how I feel about about that because then you have to try to like go through and like remap all the key, uh, like you know, all the all the buttons and stuff. Um, but it, it's cool to have the option. And but you know, at the same it time, is. if you're diehard like that, it's good to be able to do it. But at the same time, you got to worry about like you know, if Nintendo like updates the firmware and they just like you know brick this device, then you're just like right. out that money. So like I don't know if it's really that serious, but it's cool that people are developing cool different accessories for the Switch. Who knows? Maybe we'll maybe we'll get to try it out one day. Yeah, who's to say? We we, we shall see. Uh, up next, more news. Uh, Splatoon has outsold Breath of the Wild uh, in Japan. I believe this is the first time Breath of the Wild, or, or just in general, is this total? Yeah, no, no, Japan, you were absolutely correct. But... Total in Japan. Splatoon yeah. 2 has done better than Breath of the Wild. 
that's shocking uh because wild breath of the wild like you know that was like the yeah. reason people were like i'm getting on the switch train and i'm riding it all the way to hyrule <laughs> but, but that joke was funny that was clever you laugh I, at that yeah, okay <laughs> <laughs> but um i mean the fact that a game was able to kind of like overtake that like that's a big that's a big deal um i believe it or not i still haven't really had a chance to play splatoon so i i got i, I gotta get either. in there um, I think it's funny that this is a game that's made for kids, but adults are playing it, you know? It seems like a lot more adults. I haven't seen that meme go around. I think it's pretty accurate. I mean, it makes, you know, it makes, it be, I guess in a way, like most, a lot of video games are for kids, but not all of them, but this is one, yeah, I have seen that too. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, this, this one, one is, it's kind of like, you know, it's like an FPS for kids, but it really, like, if you really want to win, like, team, you know, team play is, like, a big, a big part of it. You really got to coordinate and plan it out, or you will get, like, destroyed by a team, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I, I'm excited to, to be able to, hopefully, I think I'm gonna be able to spend some time with it this weekend. I've just been super, super busy, um, but I, I'm hoping that you're gonna pick it up in the near future, so we can, we can, you know, play it out together. But we'll see. We're gonna get a break from that Destiny beta, because it's over. So. We will. We'll see. Um, you know, got a birthday coming up. I'm looking for some uh, eShop coin. That's right. There you go, sir. You, 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 you card in my future. You heard it here. Seth Trav is you know, accepting uh, eShop coins. Shows at preach.us. Send him a gift. Oh, if you would. <laughs> I would love it. I would be so happy. Thank you all so, so much as I turn 29 on August 3rd. There you go. Uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen. I'm an old release, but we're going to do next to talk about all the new releases coming up in Press Continue. This is something we want to know a lot more about. New games coming out this week for the Nintendo Switch. First up, we've got Overcooked. How would you tell us about that, Glenn? Oh, the Overcooked has been one of the long rumored games that people have been really, really waiting for. It's been on the PS3, the Xbox, a bunch of other platforms. Uh, and basically, you, know, you mentioned earlier uh, on the Preachcast, our kind of like general like entertainment show, um, that you really liked Kitchen Nightmares. And in Overcooked, you are kind of in your own kitchen nightmare, uh, where <laughs> you play like side by side. It's like a you know on the couch multiplayer game. Um, where you were all in a kitchen trying to like prepare a meal and everybody's got a job to do and you kind of have to like one person's like chopping the vegetables and then they get to bring it over to the next person who has to like throw them into the into the pot and like cook them and then they have to take them out and then they have to bring it to somebody who's going to plate them and garnish it and like it's like step by step and you have to try to do it as fast as possible like um, it, it's it's supposed to be a ton of fun uh, it's 19.99. I'm hoping that we get to try it out uh, because it's supposed to be awesome. Uh, people are a little perturbed because in this one it's only local multiplayer. There is no online, unlike some of the other versions. So, um, okay. But it, it, if it lives up to the hype, like I'm, I'm, I'm excited. It looks, it looks like it's a lot of fun. It might be a good gateway game to get somebody into the Switch who hasn't played before. I think that. I yeah, think get people playing more Switch. Uh, do you think the next game, Beach Buggy Racing, would be able to do that? Uh, if that seems so. Beach Buggy Racing is like a late edition. I gotta say that the way that they like, the way that they announce games for the Nintendo Switch eShop, like every week, I, I honestly try. Like I'm thinking about like you know the games that are coming out every week. Uh, like as soon as the show is done, I'm already looking ahead to the next week to see what's coming out. Like what I can like research. Mm -hmm. Like. I try to really stay like you know on top of all the releases, uh, but they just like add games like randomly. What seems like the day before, and Beach Buggy Racing is one of them. It seems like it's like this Donkey Kong uh, or like Diddy Kong style Junior style like racing game that happens like on the beach. Not really a lot of details about it out right now. In fact, it's not on the um, you know it's not listed uh, on the main release page. Um, I did find it on the Nintendo Switch subreddit though, uh, so I'm thinking it's gonna I'm thinking it's gonna pop up. Uh, and it is on their website. It's listed. It's just not listed on the Switch eShop page as of this recording. So who knows? Maybe <laughs> it'll be like one of the other releases that we're going to talk about. Uh, that and it, maybe it'll get pushed back. Who knows? Uh, but it looks like it looks like fun. I don't think it's going to be quite on the overcooked level though. No, no. Uh, what do you think about this game, uh, Cubic's Paint? 
Tell me all about this one. Yeah, so Cubics paint looks really cool. First of all, like the price point is like, you know, it is where it's at, man. This game is $4.99. And this thing is kind of like, you know, it's not really like anything else. Um, you, In this game, I don't really know if it's necessarily a game. You're sculpting and painting like 3D figurines uh, using the touch screen. Um, so you, they say you will become sort of a Michelangelo, sculpting digitally with your own fingers to free the cubics hiding within the block. So basically, wow. like, there's, like, different models, and you have to, like, sculpt them out of, like, this, like, these bricks. Um, since there's over 80 unique different models, you can share your creations through social media. Um, you can sculpt, paint. Um, there's a maker one, uh, an image, whatever that might mean. Um, but mm. it looks cool. Like, if you are you were an artist of sorts uh, or if you just want to do something a little bit different this might be this might be up your your alley and for the price of five bucks like it might be worth giving a shot yeah definitely become a, a master of the classics uh and you can also become masters of classics in the namco museum yeah man what, yes. what are they what are they handing us this time what's coming out of the vault there are namco I really want to like the, like I, when I first saw this like yeah I was like this this is gonna be awesome this could be really cool it's thirty bucks all right so they're really kind of you know they're they're up there they're mm-hmm. they're getting pretty high in terms of how much like money this thing is gonna cost so for thirty bucks you know my standards are a little bit higher than normal as they should be you know but Namco Museum they're dragging kind of out of the vault here you're getting a good amount of games you're getting Pac Man um which I love I love a Pac Man like I love classic Pac Man. Classic Batman. Okay. Um, so, like, you know, I'm I'm in. Um, you're getting Galaga, uh, which I'm not the biggest fan of. Mm. Um, you're getting Splatter House, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> like Splatter House is a ton of fun. Um, you're getting Tower of Dragula or Dragula. Oh. Don't know. Um, uh, you're also getting Rolling Thunder, um, Sky Kid, and Tank Force. Tank Force is a lot of fun, as is Rolling Thunder. Yes, is. Uh, and there are more uh, as well. Um, so you you get a good amount of games in this. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's 30 bucks. I feel like you could get, I feel like you could get more. Um, I, I don't know, man. I'm also sad that there's no physical release of this because at least with, like with yeah. a physical release, like, and I love physical releases like anyway, cause like, I love to have like the box and like, I, I don't know, I like the whole, I like the whole, I, I have the collector bug bad. Um, mm-hmm. but, but like at least with the physical release, it could go down in price. You know, you could yeah. get you could get a used copy. You could trade games in, and then you can get it, and you can try it out, and people will play your game. Um, I also don't think I want to dedicate as much space as something like this might take up on my SD card. Yeah, it'd be cool you know, if they. Like, eh. Yeah, it's a good it's a good point. It'd be cool if they give you like you know on the website if they told you kind of how big the file is. Um, in the um in the eShop themselves, they'll tell you how big it is before you download it. Um, mm-hmm. but they don't really tell you on the eShop website. Uh, but Namco Museum, like I mean, I guess you could do worse, but you could do better. You definitely could. Um, hopefully, uh, the next one's better because they pushed it back. They they held it off on that release. It's uh, Ultra Hyperball. Yeah, yeah, Ultra Hyperball. We talked about this uh, last week um, uh, on uh, our last episode, and uh, it, it was interesting because it kind of seems like the description of it in the like, on the shop is a little vague, uh, but it looks like you're more or less playing like hot potato with a couple other people. You have to like kind of keep this ball like in the air. Um, what's interesting uh, about this game is it is $9.99, um, but we just recently found out that we're going to be doing a review of it on an upcoming episode. So we're going to have like, you know, a firsthand experience all about what Ultra Hyperball is like. So we'll be mm-hmm. able to speak to it in detail. So I look forward to giving it a shot because, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's, it, I'm not sure what it's about. I want to know. Not yet. We're going to find out later yes, sir. on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's it for new releases this week. Tons of games, tons of fun. Act. Let us know what you're playing. Uh, if you're picking up any of these ones, uh, get at us at Switch It Up Cast on Twitter. Because now, ladies and gentlemen, is that it? Now, Switch that's It Up it? Show at Switch It Up Show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> there you go. There, you there go. it is. That's the correct one. Uh, but for now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go right along with it. Let's play. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the new segment uh, right now where we're going to be talking all about the game that we played this week, our review, and it's Levels Plus Addictive Puzzle Game. And my God, man, uh, it is a great, great game. Uh, It's by our good friend, nicest guy uh, that we've been speaking with. Uh, His name's Shumpei Hayashi. 
Uh, everybody go out there, get this game. It is only $6.99. Uh, let me tell you, I love a good puzzle game, okay? I get deep into the Dokkan battle. You already know it's your boy here. Uh, I'm loving a little Gems of War. I like these puzzle games, you know? I was big into, what was it, 2048, 1408, whatever that game was yeah, where you had to make the numbers match up. Mm-hmm. Something like that, right? 2048, uh, you got it, you got it, right? 2048, that was it. 2048, like math, right? <laughs> um, so having a game like this, which plays kind of like a 2048, but with a little bit more depth, um, it's really cool. Like I said, it's only $6.99. You can play it with the touch screen if you want, or you can play it with the controller bits. I, of course, don't like to touch my Switch screen because I'm a little bit of a purist like that. So I just use the touch parts. But basically what you're doing is you are uh, moving three different cubes around. One of them's money. One of them is your attacking type people. And the other cube that you can actually move is... Uh, I think you're referring to uh, like the red uh, like the red panels. Oh, uh, so they're like the enemy. Two cubes, the red yeah. panels, which are the enemies. Yeah, yeah. They you... come at you uh, as you do better, as you collect more coins. Uh, what you do is you push similar numbers onto each other, whether they be the yellow ones, which are the coins, the blue ones, which are the people. You are attacking people. Uh, you just push them together to make them better uh, so they can either get more money, bigger money uh, that you've pushed together, or fight off the bigger enemies. Uh, and you just go around beating up the enemies, kind of beating them up. It's really just a push thing. It's very, very, very simple, but it's very, very, very addicting. The music is great. The graphics are on point. Uh, it's everywhere you want it to be. It's funny because, like, I mean, when I when I saw this game on the eShop, like, I thought of you because it's, you know, it's it's a it's just a puzzle game that doesn't really have necessarily an end to it. It kind of just keeps uh, it kind of just keeps going. Uh, and traditionally, I really don't really like puzzle games that much. You know, I like uh, like on PS4, there's this really cool one called the Talos Principle, which is almost like Portal, but a little bit easier. <laughs> uh, but like, regular puzzle games like this, I never really got into. But I started to play this. And dude, I, I could, I just could not put it down. I immediately texted you. I was like, "You need to play this game," um, did. because it is so. It's like, it's like beautiful. It's like beautiful in its simplicity. You know, like you basically, like you said, you just have these different um, like tiles, and you're sliding them around. And basically, like blue tiles, it says in the description, blue tiles are your friend. So if you get two blue tiles, each with a power of one, you slide them together, and they turn into a power of two. Um, if you once you get two twos, you can put them together and you turn into a three, and then you can use that three and push it up to a red enemy and you know a red three, and it'll go away. And essentially, you're trying to get rid of those red enemy tiles as quickly as you can, because the longer you let them linger, the stronger they get, the harder it becomes to be able to defeat them. Um, mm -hmm. So, and you want to get as many points or the money tiles as you can uh, as you're as you're going. Um, it, it's dude, you can earn points, you earn medals, mm -hmm. you do achieve. Things, which is a lot of fun there's like a global scoreboard it looks like um i didn't actually check and see what my rank there was yet i didn't want to get too obsessed with it not to be honest i went into like the um like the tutorial mode which doesn't have like an ending um mm -hmm. and i just started playing that and i i just I, I just i was like whoa before i knew it like 30 minutes went by and i was like oh my god i'm still <laughs> Dude, yeah. I, I killed it. What's your top score? Do you happen to know off the top of your head? No, no, not at all. I, I was like, I, to me, I was just trying to keep like, I love the idea of like, you're just like, as you're moving it around, you're kind of just like putting out fires, like as they yeah, happen, you know, much. like you're just trying to keep it under control, trying mm -hmm. to like, but it's weird because after you start playing it for a while, like you need to not only worry about getting rid of the red tiles that are on the screen, but you have to make sure that you like have tile like blue tiles that are strong enough in order to take them out but also watch your positioning because as it starts yeah. to get harder you're going to get like before you know it like a red like six will pop up and you're like oh no and you're looking around and you're like well i might be able to make a blue six but it's on the other side of the board and how do i slide it over and like you, you get know, boxed in easy yeah it'd be, and once you can't get to it like you know if there's no moves it, it'll it'll end uh and it's just it's cool because what starts off really simple you could see like that there's really a lot behind it um I, i'm just like happy it's out there it's really it's really fun it's like a logic puzzle kind of it is it's it's one of those logical movement things um tons of fun man uh, I think you were telling me that it's also free right now on the uh, iTunes store. Yeah, um, yeah store? levels plus uh, addictive puzzle game. It is. Uh, it's like a freemium game 
on uh, on iOS. So basically, you can download it. It's free to play, and there are in-app purchases uh, for like you know like power ups and stuff like that. So if you are you know questioning the price of six ninety nine uh, in the eShop, first of all, I cannot recommend this game enough. So I mean, I would just buy it. This but is exactly what I was looking for with the Switch. I kept saying I want just a simple puzzle game I can pick up and just goof around with on the Switch at and not have to you know, lose necessarily 12 hours like I do in Zelda or feel like I'm investing in mu- as much time as I do with Zelda. Speaking of today, I was playing Levels Plus uh, while I was listening to the new Zelda vinyl that we both picked up. Yeah. It yeah. incredible. It made all the puzzle matching that much more epic. Yeah, but if you can't, uh, if you're thinking, of, you know, if you're just trying to, I understand they're throwing a lot of releases out there. So if you're trying to kind of pull back, be a little bit more responsible uh, with your funds, uh, you can definitely try this out on iOS. Uh, and I recommend and I recommend that you do. And probably what will happen is you'll like it so much that you'll buy it on Switch. And then you'll also be glad that you have it with you on your phone. I'm going to download this on my phone just so I can play it like while I'm waiting around different places because it's perfect. <laughs> you can play it. You can play it real quick. You can play it for five minutes or you can play this game for like an hour if you wanted to. Exactly. Uh, I might download it too. Uh, again, great guy, Shumpei Hayashi. Uh, great work, man. Great work. What are you gonna rate this game? Ah, uh, dude, this is um, this this is I gotta say of the games we reviewed. Um, I don't know this. I don't know if this one's my favorite, but it, it very well could be. This um, might be my this might be my first five. Like I mean, my for, second five, I guess. I Zelda feel, I, dude. I, you know what? I, I was gonna say like I don't want to try to like you know hand out like you know a five all willy nilly or anything, but if you think about it in terms of like you know its genre of a puzzle game. Like this is perfect for me. Is it? So I mean, I would give this a five. This is great. This is my, this is my favorite game. Probably like you know, I don't I don't include Zelda in this, you know. But this is my favorite. No, it's a puzzle game. Different this, genre. This game. is my favorite. This is my favorite. Like this is definitely my favorite indie game that we've done so far. And you've played Puyo Puyo Tetris. I have, but you know what? What's interesting is for I don't know. This was just easier for me to understand, and like I feel like it kind of walks you through. And even though it start, it goes. This is how these are the rules, and like you know, as you get better, like it gets harder. Um, mm-hmm. but not in an unfair way. This, this, like, I don't know. I felt this like taught me the game better than I, I felt a little, I feel a little lost in Poyo Poyo. <laughs> That's fine. That happens. Uh, how about you let us know what you think, ladies and gentlemen, go out there, get levels plus addictive puzzle game for six ninety nine on the Nintendo eShop or get it for free on iOS. Let us know what you think about it. We are at switch it up show on Twitter. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the ninth episode of the Switch and Outcast. I am, of course, your host, Seth Trav, joined as always by our friend Glenn. He's at From the Crib. Uh, together, we are at Preachcast on Twitter. Be sure to follow us on Twitch. Check out our new YouTube channel. Uh, just search Preach Network on YouTube and check out Destiny uh, because that's probably where you're going to find us. Uh, but, ladies and gentlemen, if things ever start to get boring, just switch it up.